Okay, I'm going to do an introduction to probability here. Uh, I'm not covering right now the uh, set theory. I assume that you did that already. Uh, I may go back and make uh, some video about that also, but uh, it's basic. You can find it uh, many places, but uh, I'm going to assume that you, you have that already. Okay, so um, this first table here tries to uh, explain what we mean by the word probability. And, <coughs> you know, when we say the probability of heads when you toss a coin is 50% or one half, and I ask people, what does it ask you, ask people what that means? Uh, you know, a lot, most people will just say it means the chances are 50%, but really that doesn't help, right? It's just using another word that has this basically the same meaning as probability, so it doesn't really help us. So, um, uh, they say if we toss a coin once, it's impossible to predict in advance with certainty uh, whether the outcome will be head or tail. However, if we toss the coin again and again, the proportion of heads and tails tend towards certain fixed values. Okay, uh, right? That, that seems to make sense. To illustrate, consider this table. So here, the first column is um, the number of tosses. So uh, the second column is the number of heads. And the third column is the proportion of heads. So uh, we use N for the number of tosses. We'll, they'll use H, I guess, for the number of, usually they'll use F, but right now they're using uh, H and H over N. So here we toss the coin 10 times. We got eight heads. So the proportion of uh, tosses that were heads was 0.8. Then we, if we toss the coin 100 times, maybe we got 62, so the proportion is that. And 1,000 times, maybe we get this, this, and so the proportion is this, and so on. We keep going up to 20,000, and here's what we get. Uh, so we're getting, first it's 80%, then it's 62%, then it's 47%, then it's 51%, then it's 50 and so on. Okay. So they say as the tossing, uh, coin tossing continued, however, the proportion of heads began to settle down so that during the last 5,000 tosses, the proportion of heads changed by only 0 0.008. So what does that mean? I guess if you look at the last 5,000 from 15 to 20,000, the proportion was here and it went to here. It didn't change very much. So that gives us the idea that it's sort of settling down. Uh, these data suggest that if we continued the coin tossing beyond 20,000, the proportion of heads would approach some fixed constant value, and it should be close to a half. Now, so we think of that this as the probability of heads. Okay, now think of it this way. Suppose it didn't settle down to a half. So it looks like it's settling down to 0 0.5 or a half, but suppose it seemed to settle down to 0 0.3 instead of 0 0.5. So what would you conclude? Well, probably, you know, if that happened after 20,000 tosses, you'd probably say, well, this coin is not balanced, right? There's some, it's not, it's not a perfectly balanced coin. And so it tends to uh, land on heads less than it does on tails because it's only 30%, right? So you would conclude that the real, that the probability of heads was 0.3, right? So what you're saying is that, th you, that this is the kind of definition you use for the meaning of probability. Because if this turns out to be 0.3, you'll change what you feel the probability is to 0.3, right? So, um, so this seems like a reasonable kind of definition of what probability is. So th the reason we say the probability is 1 half is because it settles down to 1 half. If it didn't settle down to exactly one half, we'd say, oh, the coin is not quite balanced. And uh, we'd adjust what we said was the probability of heads. Okay. Um, to generalize the idea, the above idea, assume that we have an experiment that can be repeated indefinitely and under fixed conditions. So indefinitely, we, we can keep doing it. So we did it 20,000 times, we could do it more. And under fixed conditions, so uh, all the other variables are uh, the same. 
in other words, and suppose that during n repetitions of this exper experiment, um, a certain event occurs f times. So, uh, for example, head occurs f times. We call the ratio f over n the relative frequency of the uh, event after n repetitions. If this relative frequency approaches a number p, so in the above example it approached the number 0.5, maybe, as n becomes larger and larger, n meaning as we toss the coin more and more, then, the prob then p is called the probability of the event. Thus as n, the number of repetitions becomes larger and larger, the approximation p uh, equals f over m becomes better and better. This definition of probability is somewhat unsatisfactory since the meaning of the phrase the relative frequency approaches the number p has not been precisely explained. Nevertheless, your intuitive feeling of the meaning of this statement should be perfect, perfectly adequate for most purposes. So, you know, we usually use uh, the, the um, notation of limit here, but they're, they're avoiding that in this book. <coughs> Informally then, so not formally, formally would mean if we started to use the limit, the probability of an event is its long-term relative frequency. So this is called the long-term relative frequency if we let n get larger and larger. That is the proportion of the time that the event would occur if the experiment were repeated indefinitely and under fixed conditions. Now they say sometimes we don't necessarily use this approach to talking about what, what probability means. Uh, they say in some situations probabilities can be obtained using logical reasoning and intuition. For example, if we have an ordinary six-sided die that we assume to be perfectly balanced, of course no die is perfectly balanced, and perfectly symmetrical, then intuition tells us that the probability of tossing a two with this die is one six. We obtain this con conclusion by arguing that each of the six possible outcomes has an equal chance of occurring, so that over the long term the number of uh, the number two will appear one sixth of the time. Some probabilities cannot be obtained using intuition; they can only be estimated from experimental data. For example, suppose we have a certain production process for manufacturing photographic flash bulbs, and we are interested in the probability that the process will produce a defective bulb. Well, we don't have any intuition about what the probability should be for this, of estimating what the probability of getting a defective bul bulb is. Intuition will not tell us what this probability is. However, if we test 10,000 bulbs and find that three are defective, we can approximate the probability of an effect defective bulb by the relative frequency 3 over 10,000. So we would say the probability of defective is about this. So uh, in terms of what we mean by probability, they say the long-term relative frequency, which is what we've just been describing, interpretation of probability, is appropriate for experiments that can be repeated over and over under fixed conditions. For some, for experiments that cannot be repeated over and over under fixed condi conditions, we can't really use this relative frequency meaning for what is the meaning of probability. In that case, maybe we use what's called the subjective interpretation of probability. With this approach, the probability of an event is, re uh, is viewed as a measure on a scale from 0 to 1 of the strength of belief that the event will occur when the experiment is, is performed. So it's, it's a slightly different uh, meaning to what we mean by probability. So like for example, uh, before the first soft landing on Mars, experts estimated a 40% chance of finding life on Mars. This was a subjective assignment of probability based on expert opinion. Okay. <coughs>